In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! And... W- <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> that's, a, that's the way to start an episode. Hot. <laughs> Yes. Look, if you want old men making old man noises, talking about their toys, you're in the right place because we are here to talk about part two of TNG series two Playmates Toys. I'm here with my co-host, Mike Indeglio. How are things going? Things are going great. I have to say I've been thinking long and hard about it. And Mm -hmm. at first I was going to, you know, really play the character of making fun of you on this show as a big nerd who's got all these toys. But the truth of the matter is when I really looked in the mirror, I realized that I'm having so much fun watching you show me (laughs) your toys. And I only can hope that uh, we get to see lots of toys in the future. We have other ideas, but until you can run, you got to walk, you got to zoom in, and we have plenty of Star Trek toys left to investigate, Keith. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump back into that uh, TNG Series 1. Okay, TNG Series 1. We are now up to figure number 6015, Jordy LaForge. It is yes. the first LaForge. Look at that. Now, if you remember last episode, I mentioned that there were earlier versions of this uniform that had seams down the front. And if you look at the uh, screenshot we have here of LeVar Burton performing Jordy LaForge from season three, episode six, Booby Trap, you can actually subtly see the seams down his chest before they uh, deleted them. Not um, not flattering though. Not flattering at all. I think. I mean, it's. It, I'd look better in that than anything form fitting. I don't at know, least form fitting so much. It looks ambiguous like, up there. Yeah, I guess maybe the material. I'm not. Um, it, it's very. He looks like he's wearing. He's like under underdressed. Like he's got six shirts on underneath there. Yes. Well, and I think that's part of what the seams were trying to do is get rid of that. I, I believe they switched to a thicker fabric. Mm. which would allow uh, less wrinkling. I don't know that for sure. But interestingly, he does have the collar there. I mentioned last episode that they added the collar later. Uh, Maybe that was just uh, nonsense, and maybe 10,000 people flamed me on it. We'll see. (laughs) We'll talk into the past. (laughs) Okay, so the figure itself, uh, pretty standard Jordy figure, but you'll notice there, uh, of course, uh, Jordy wears a visor in order to see and uh, one of the things that happened with this toy initially was it was a removable visor. Interesting. And they quickly learned, oops, that's a choking hazard. So after they uh, the first run went out, they glued them all down. And so the uh, visors were not removable. But I do believe that if you decide to pull it off anyway, you will see that his eyes have been painted uh, white like Jordy's eyes are on the show. Uh, so if you want to mess up your toy, take a look. We'll we'll see. And you'll see him on eBay where they have been pulled off. Um, but uh, yeah, so what do you think? Jordy here. Jordy's awesome. Um, one of my favorite characters. I was... We're going to inter- look at his butt for a while. <laughs> oh, is he is he paused? <laughs> There well, we th- speaking of, that's my favorite. Uh, my f- <laughs> um, Your favorite is Jordy's butt? Uh, I mean, I think I speak for everyone when I say that. Fair enough. You had mentioned it earlier. I thought it was interesting. I'm sure this is n- n- no new fact for for fans. But I, I thought, I always wondered what a challenge it was to, to act without being able to express with your eyes. But you were saying how it actually turns out that Maybe his eyes are obscured to us, but it actually wasn't that difficult for him. He could see perfectly through that. That was. Yeah. Well, the the acting challenge was not seeing um, Mm -hmm. because he everyone when we were kids would put on like our mom's like hair band and uh, like headband thingy and uh, and look through it. And you could actually see there are little holes in there so you could see fine. Little did we know that that's basically what they used to create this, uh, at least initially before they built it. Um, And so he could see just fine. The acting challenge, and we're both actors, is that 
the audience can't see your eyes. Mm -hmm. And so much acting is done through the eyes. And so LeVar Burton was given a really interesting challenge, difficult challenge to act without us seeing his eyes. So all of his, all of his emotion had to come everywhere else. And, uh, I mean, you know, it, LeVar Burton is a tremendous actor and, and was able to do it. And I think it's a, a very, very interesting element to add to the character. I've been noticing too, that the piping on the little, uh, cutout of their boot, situation on their pants is yeah. been has has alternated from character to character we got a yellow piping uh, accent here and uh, well, i've seen a red as well well it's gonna match the the color of the main uniform now in mm. star trek each division has its own color so uh the yellow or gold we're seeing here is uh is security and engineering, whereas red is command and uh, the teal blue, depending on your color settings on your television, is the science and medical. And do we know, but, uh, can you tell me the accoutrement that uh, accompanied Jordy in his character here in series one? Well, he had, uh, you know, the usual stuff. He didn't have a little, uh, he didn't have his uh, tricorder holder, which is ironic because he's probably the one most likely to use it. <laughs> uh but, you know, he came with all the usual stuff, his phaser and, and, you know, various plastic nonsense. I think I have an unopened Georgie somewhere, but I'm not going to go get it. I'll check it later. <laughs> Let's move on now and talk about 6016. It is time to introduce counselor Deanna Troy, played, of course, by Marina Sirtis. And uh, this is one of many outfits that Deanna wore throughout the series. Um, she was a Starfleet officer. She was actually a lieutenant commander at the beginning. So she actually outranked most of our characters. But after the pilot where she wore this weird uh, uniform that was never uh, she never wore again, um, you saw it in the background of a couple of scenes in the season one, but that was it for her. Uh, but she wore a whole bunch of these sort of civilian outfits, outfits, outfits through um, most of the series, of course, until she uh, in uh, chain of command was forced by Captain Jellico to put on her regular Starfleet uniform, which uh, was something that Marina wanted and I thought was great for the character and the part because – uh, they were sort of portraying her as the va va voom sexy mm. character, and you'll notice here on the figure the like absurd amount of weird makeup they put on her, and you know, of course, all of her outfits were were you know were low cut cleavage and such, and it was you know it it wasn't the best look for that character. They, it, it took them a while to figure out what to do. With yeah, the, it, the we character. are going more. The paint job not great. Maybe one of not the the hair helps with the likeness. The paint job kind of overdid it when we compare it to the character. It looks ridiculous. Yeah, it's <laughs> a little. Honest. It's a little crazy. It's not the best, but I, at least they got her hands under control. We've seen some some uh, oversized hands on the other characters, but it seems like they got it here. Not the greatest likeness, but no, uh, the they gave it a this, swing. Yeah, this, this was this was not the the greatest of figures, and actually, there's a little detail that you'll notice on some of these have it, and some of them don't. So, uh, <clears throat> as I shudder to point out, if you look on her uh, the back of her leg, you Hold see. On, let's, let's get back to the. All right, zoom, do it. zoom back in. Go to the hero shot. All right, let me get it turned around a little bit. I mean, I could I could do it on on Hold toy on, cam, but I think oh, you got it. Oh, that's better. There you go. There we are. You'll see uh, the little copyright stamp, and oh, it yeah. says copyright 1992, Playmates Toys, uh, Paramount Pictures. Uh, but it's odd because they the stamp is on some of the figures, but not on others. So it's on Troy and Picard, but it's not on Worf. As I'm just looking at them in my hands right now, so it's a. I'm not sure exactly what the deal was there that they wanted to uh, add that. I wonder if wonder if that was. And if somebody knows, again, leave a comment, correct us, let us know. I, I I have no interest in being right. I just want to know stuff. It's interesting. So I wonder if the first run of them had them and then they decided, nah, and uh, 
So the figures that I have that were from the first set might have had these these copyright. Also, things on. I'm curious as to whether it's in the prototyping phase or in the detailing phase. Like, at what point did they decide like we got to give their like right below their butt cheek, we have to crease the pants. <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and it's it's true of all of the figures. Hmm. All of them have that. And then, well, it, because you have to, you know, bend the legs. So many action figures have these weird little like diaper things <laughs> because they have to have the they have to cut there. It's odd. That's a lot, and, you know, that's a lot of hair too to model. Like it's not like there's a lot of figures they could reuse that hair on. That's very specific to this character. Yeah. No, that is uh it's true and you'll have um, you know, a lot of the figures will reuse heads or reuse bodies at various points. Um this is I th I don't think we use this head again. Um possibly for one other figure. We'll get to it. Uh but can, uh, I, can I share yeah, with ahead. you uh, yeah. w what will be a blasphemous comment to, oh, no. to, n to not only Star Trek fans, but to uh, theater fans and just fans of talent oh, for God. years, not in my adulthood, but in like my, like my middle, my adolescence through probably too late. I should have known this earlier. Do when does our I, adolescence end? Yeah, fair. Do you know that I often confused? Uh oh. Marina Sirtis with Patty Lapone. With Patty Lapone. <laughs> Isn't that in, literally insane? Oh my god. Now there is such a small subset of people <laughs> watching this that are going to understand that. Yeah, but that Venn diagram, uh, those people in that center if ellipse. You are the will... musical theater Star Trek geek <laughs> uh, of which there are many of us. Uh for sure. That's really funny. Bizarre. Uh, I, I used to, when I was very little, I used to confuse uh, Dan Rather and Ronald Reagan. You know, because it was like, you know, it was like an old white dude talking on TV. Yeah. 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 yeah it seemed like a thing. Anyway, <laughs> let us move forward. Now, at the back end of series one, we start getting into the weird stuff. And that is, we're going to start with 6051, the generic Romulan. So, uh, Mike, what do you know about Romulans? Uh, they're bad, right? That's the bad guy? Uh, they were typically the bad guys, yeah. Uh, they love a squared off shoulder. They're very <laughs> B. Arthur. They uh, basically cut a, you know, they take, their, they take a couch from the 90s, they cut out the bottom, and they just put it over themselves. They've got a Vulcan-esque quality to their design, Ooh. some would say, yeah. Yes. The, the the straight bang, the sort of veed forehead, the ear. So I'm imagining if I delved deep into the lore, Keith, there's some crossover there, yeah? I'm at, I'd imagine. Uh, yes, indeed. They are sort of sister races. So, uh, yeah, no, there is a lot of... But I can tell you, we've gone back to the, the cargo short design, the cargo pant design, but that jacket is really the showpiece here. The detailing is splendid, save the little falcon. Oh, no, it's there. It's just the coloring is different. Uh, talk to me about this figurine. Yes. So uh, this was the first of the generic alien uh, figures where this isn't a specific character. It's just a Romulan. Um, now, the first time we saw Romulans on Next Gen were actually in the uh, season one finale, where one of the two Romulans we met was played by Mark Alimo. Of course, fans know it's called the Cut. Was one of the first Romulans mm. uh, with Anthony James, and they also in that first appearance wore these black sashes, which they sort of got rid of. What we're seeing here both in the figure is and and on the screenshot and this is from season three episode 10 the defector uh this is what we came to know as sort of the romulan proper of next gen uh this was a character played by james sloyan so uh, this figure is similarly based on that there was another episode that had a younger romulan that might this looks a little bit more like um but yeah, I mean, they, they were interesting uh, foes and certainly we're going to get to it next um, because the uh, the next gen had to take a, a hard left 
<laughs> because on uh, who the uh, nemesis is, nemeses were going to be because the Ferengis didn't really pan out. So uh, while we're doing it, why don't we hop over to the Ferengis? Let's take a look at 6052, the generic Ferengi. Uh oh. Oof. Oof. Woof. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that looks like Orco from He Man a little bit. We got an Orco vibe. It's short. The boots are something special. I mean, they went all out when, when it comes to detailing. I'll give you that. Yeah, boy, they they went all out with the design here. And the so again, the fans are gonna know all of this, so I apologize for repeating myself, but the Ferengi were supposed to be the main villains of next gen and season one, they set them up to be like these scary tough guys and the ships were powerful. And we'd never even seen one before and what's going to happen. And it built up. And then we saw the Ferengis and it's not even so much the makeup as the performances. They were these ridiculous hoppy idiot gerbil people. And, uh, so it was, it was bad. Uh, it was real bad. However, don't if they go you, back to the well, though, in another series as uh, one of the main cast members? They sure do. In fact, uh, if you hop back over to the two shot, you'll see that one of the first Ferengi that we ever see on in the well, in, in all of canon, uh, the one there, it's played by Armin Shimmerman. Oh, is that who, the guy? Of course, played Quark on Deep Space Nine. And uh, tremendous actor, tremendous character. And what they did with the Ferengi is they were like, oh, wait, these people aren't scary, but they might be funny. <laughs> and so they immediately uh, decided to, after I think two uh, two or three episodes, they're like, oh, wait, no, these guys are, are dum-dums. They're like these money-obsessed traitors, and they're, they're weak and ineffectual, and <laughs> it completely changed – the species and then ended up being pretty fun honestly like for for something that started out so lame they found a way to make it fun and a lot of it was armin shimmerman's performance um as quark a really interesting layered character that we will get to uh when we get to the deep space nine figures uh but this was i'm surprised they made a figure of this era because it immortalizes the worst of the Ferengi and the like the animal pelt sashes we never saw again, those boots we never saw like that they 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 pulled the uh, emergency brake on this character pretty quick and but they made this figure, you know, six years later. so well, riddle me this. I have a couple of questions for you real quick. okay. We won't spend too much time on the Ferengi, but uh, two questions. Number one, I see that on both the character in the foreground and on our model here, we've got that tattoo on the top right forehead. Is uh, that specific to this? I can't tell on the other guy. Is that specific to this character or that's an all Ferengi? Uh, this this was a thing that I, I'm pretty sure, and again, correct me, folks, but I think this was the only time they had that detail. Interesting. Um, and I don't even know if the other Ferengis did... Uh, so in that case, if they didn't, then this is actually a figure of that specific character played by Armin Shimmerman. So, uh, I don't know, folks, let me know right in the comments below. Tell me whether I'm, uh, right or wrong on that, but I don't think I ever saw a tattooed, uh, Ferengi after that. And then in our next part of our new segment, teach Mike about Trek. Is teach Mike about Trek. That doesn't look detachable, but what is their head piece? What is the headpiece called? I don't know Ooh. if it has a canon name. Stomped. I well, I I may be wrong, but I don't think it's ever named. You have some Ferengis that have it and some that don't. Quark did not wear one, but uh Rom did, I believe. Uh I don't think it was ever named. Uh let me know, folks. Yeah, something tells somebody me somebody knows someone the answer on the to internet this question. Knows. Yep. And I would love to know the answer to this question. And if you I'll tell you what. If you give us information we don't already know, we will shout you out on the next episode. Oh, yeah. 100%. Sure. Okay, let us move forward to another one of our alien species. But this time, it's not generic. It's Gowron. We are going to 6053. Let's take a look 
at the future, yeah. the past and future leader of the Klingon Empire. Oh, that face! That is awesome. So uh, this is Gowron played by Robert O'Reilly, who is most famous for having those crazy bug out eyes. Um, and we saw him both on Next Generation and Deep Space Nine as one of the leaders. He has a whole arc battling to uh, take over of the uh, the Klingon Empire. And then uh, in the Dominion Wars, played a big... Uh, no spoilers. So this is... Uh, yeah, so he was first seen in episode uh, season four, episode seven, Reunion. And the screenshot is from Redemption Part One. What do you think of Galron? This is... Might be my fave uh, that we've seen so far, just because it's so badass. I mean, it is epic. That face is absolutely insane. Uh, in fact, I want to get us a close shot of it if I can. Although I'll say that the model is the back detailing does give it a little bit of like a uh, turn of the century vampire kind of feel, like a corset kind of vibe, which I don't know that is exactly what we're going for. But... I mean, hold on. Let me go ahead and transition over to here. Like, that is absolutely a really, <laughs> really cool action figure. Look at that thing. Well, and I think the back piece is meant to resemble the Klingon spine, because okay. actually, in the episode, uh, you were you you told me you were watching a while ago where uh, Worf broke his back and was trying to. Uh, commit suicide i think we saw a piece of his spine and they had the prosthetics that looked like that i don't know why they built a second spine on the figure on the back there but uh yeah you got these rad boots super right and we Maybe actually not as intimidating well we got to make them safe for kids right obviously well right right yeah no they're they're a little bit you know mama mia go go boots as well uh <laughs> But there is an episode, it, I think it's in season two, uh, maybe it might be season one, where uh, some Klingons smuggled a, a phaser on board mass, like in pieces as a part of the boot. And so they mm. were able to reassemble it. Uh, so that, that was interesting, although that, that prop looks terrible, especially in the new uh, upgraded one. It's literally falling apart as they're trying to shoot people with it. Anyway, so yeah, so Galron, I I really like the uh, the Klingon uh, military uniforms. They do look badass, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we saw he has a different kind of side holster there too. They really a lot of differences on this model. It's really cool. Yeah, and I know that there are various versions of this particular figure uh, that have that red stripe. I think it is is an it is in other colors, um, in other versions of the figure in fact uh just weird detail that uh when with a lot of the accessories um what do you call them like boops and tidbits or whatever that are in there <laughs> boops uh, and goobles or whatever <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. bits and goobles <laughs> exactly uh that they would frequently come out in different colors so in order to save money obviously they weren't painting uh most of them so you know, if you cut back, cut back the toy cam. Toy cam's gone. Oh, no. Oh, no. We lost toy cam. Uh-oh. No, we're doing it live. Keith's going to work on toy cam. I'm going to. Oh, here we go. I got it. I got it. Oh, okay. Well, that's me. That's yeah. you. That's, that's not toy cam. Uh, you'll note that most of the figures are all the same color with stickers on them for the detailing here. So this is Troy's stuff. And we go back to Rikers, and it's all gold. So uh, they would frequently swap out the colors. And I don't know if that was a money saving thing. Like, oh, we got a whole vat of green. Let's do all the all the uh, things in green for a while. Uh, but there really wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason as to what color the cheap plastic pieces were. All right. Well, talk about costumes made of cheap plastic pieces that turned into awesomeness. Let's go to the last figure of Series 1 of Next Gen 6055. We've all been waiting for it. It's the first generic Borg. Yeah, that's so close to the Terminator, I can't stand it. These guys are uh, obviously the most legendary nemesis for our heroes on Next Generation. Uh, we first saw them in Season 2, Episode 16, Q Who?, 
But, of course, we know them from the what is widely considered the the greatest two episodes, two-parter in next-gen history, and maybe the greatest cliffhanger in television history, fight me, the best of both worlds, where the Borg come and attack. It sets up a huge arc for Picard. It sets up the best of the Star Trek movies. And, of course, it had to be immortalized in a kick-ass action figure here of a generic Borg. The last thing I'll say about it is uh, I normally will credit the actor involved in this, but almost all of the Borg were background actors. They were non-speaking roles, and so they were not credited, and they were not <laughs> – they didn't even get an under five. They did not make <laughs> much they money. They had to eat at a different craft service table. That Yeah, seriously. And so they were uh, – uh, there's only – in the Next Generation series, other than Picard, when he is assimilated, there's only one Borg character that is a speaks as a as a person. I think it's Hugh. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, but you need an army of generic Borgs if you're going to play with your action figures here, right? So I've got a couple of thoughts that okay. maybe you can clarify for me. Yes. Number one, um, I'm. This is one where I'm a little disappointed. I wish that the figure was was as cool as the screenshot there. Like, here's a couple of examples. Number one, you can redeem it if you tell me that you could detach his uh, arm and there was other pieces. Like, there sure as hell were. Okay, then okay. Then I'll allow it. Because I feel like that's a little bit underwhelming, that little piece there. Yeah, there are several other pieces that you can swap that out. I've never been able to actually do it without breaking it. I don't know if it's a uh, <laughs> right. I don't know if that's a, a function of being too old or the figure itself being too old. But yes, in fact, this one came with three or four different options. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll allow it. And then number number 2 here and this you can clarify for me again. You'll see on the right, this is what I think of when I think of Borg. Un, no emotion, right? Because they're all right. part of that collective. But yet on the figurine, you're going to see here, if I can get a little zoomsy, they've given him a very stark, almost he looks all pissed off, yeah. Yeah, like, I'm mad. I'm so <laughs> mad. I have individual feelings, even though that's besides the point, right? <laughs> that's that's right, yes. The, they, he should be uh, given a more blank expression. But... I don't know. He he might have just been a you know cranky. He might have resting bitch face. The key. He, he of, might just be a cranky our, guy. Of our when short. He got uh, of our <laughs> short. Uh, uh, of our short YouTube show that we've just started. This is the best side by side we've had yet. Here we go. That's pretty close. That's true. The uh, the eyepiece is flipped, but other uh -huh. than that, it's pretty good. It's a Not it's bad. a pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty cool figure and. What we will find as we go through the series is that uh, obviously designing the model on the Borg was uh, pretty expensive and pretty difficult. There's a lot of details. So when we fleshed out the Borgs and we got more of them, they're mostly just repaints of this one. Oh, interesting. Okay. So we're going to have one that's like, oh, the metallic version and the blue version and the whatever. Uh we do we do get a great hue and we do get a a, a, a great locutus um, and then another repaint of a locutus, whatever. Uh, anyway, so what what were your general thoughts about series one of Next Gen? If you were, it, let's go back to 1992, 12 year old little Mike and Deglio. Uh, what you walk into the into the toy store? What are you feeling here? Well, you know. That, that's a, actually a, a good question because obviously there's a few different markets, as you said, for each of these toy lines. There's the collectors, which is, you know, obviously a big piece of it. But there's also exactly what we just talked about earlier is, is kids walking right to that toy aisle looking for cool figures they want to buy. Because right. some people, like this guy, mixed and matched and they all wrestled together in the same Universal Wrestling Federation. All right? Yeah, so of course. I'm always looking for guys who jump out with unique designs that I think could be great bad guys in my universe or superheroes, right? 
as a non-Star Trek guy, I'm kind of getting past, I'm not jumping to Picard, even though he looked cool in his jacket. I'm jumping to uh, um, Goron, right? Gowron, yes. Gowron. Don't don't come at me. I've made it clear <laughs> oh, gonna, I'm not a Star we, Trek guy. I, I can feel the comment yeah. board just filling. <laughs> You know, Keith and I do another podcast and I say a lot of stuff on the internet that I probably shouldn't say on the internet. Yeah, it's true. But the one thing I will not do is try to offend any of uh, the Star Trek Legion. I'm being serious. I don't (laughs) want any of that. Uh, I think that figure is awesome. I'd have snatched it up in a heartbeat. I thought the Borg equally cool. I'd want both of them. I was into bad guys. Those designs were really unique and cool and colorful. Yeah, and uh, I also liked cool little doodads and bobbles, which is bobbles, which is I'm just come trying to come up with something that sounds right. <laughs> uh, so we don't edit, folks. We don't. These edit, toys so. do jump out at me. Although I wish the doodads were cooler. Like you said, they seem to just be kind of stock, all colored, and and like they got just pulled from a press mold. So yeah, I'm a little disappointed sure. in the doodads, but something tells me that maybe they'll get a little more intricate. Or they won't. Or they won't, and uh, you can tell that I'm just making this up as I go along. (laughs) Yes, indeed. Okay, folks. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, Do the annoying thing. We're going to do it. Oh, God. Here it comes. Uh, Please like and subscribe. Uh, Would really help us. Smash the like and the subscribe. Uh, We will be back. Set phasers to subscribe. No, I I just unsubscribe from our own pod. (laughs) It's not a podcast. What is this? A video thing? I don't know. We're doing a thing. <laughs> Check out, uh, while you're at it, if you like this, we do a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, below are links to our podcast we do together about the practice. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got an album. Practice. I've got some books. I've got a whole bunch of stuff out there. Uh, there's plenty more crap you can watch That's that true. we do. If you would like to talk to us, uh, you can email us directly at look at my Star Trek toys at email at email jesus at gmail it's going well it's going very well Woo, woo, i need a sandwich uh uh, look at my star trek toys at gmail.com you can also find our instagram at star trek toys just that so uh yeah we will see you next week or whenever we record the next one i think we're gonna do deep space nine series one we're gonna mix it up sometimes it's gonna be a series sometimes it's gonna let's look at all the wharfs sometimes it's gonna be look at all the holodeck and who knows like and if you have any suggestions for themes that we could do uh just write it down below and we will be happy to talk about all of my star trek toys we'll see you later look at my star trek toys (laughs) 